Mets fans have enjoyed a strong start from Brett Beatty, but is this hot start something we can count on going forward? Let's talk about it. And well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watsu K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. So in the early part of the New York Mets season, there's been a lot of ups, there's been a lot of downs. Terrible 0-5 start, but two road series wins in a row against Cincy and Atlanta is giving this fan pace some optimism. But one of the bright spots has been their third baseman, Brett Beatty. Now, pretty much all winter long, you know, the media, the fans were discussing Beatty. A lot of people were really down on him after a very, very bad 2023. Beatty was viewed as a question mark by most at best, maybe a liability by some, and somebody the Mets should look to replace. I mean, there have been fans calling for Mark Vientos, Ronnie Mauricio. You know, some fans even wanted them to sign a, a Matt Chapman, for instance. Well, there's no doubt. Beatty was an incredibly disappointing player last year, but the, my biggest issue with him was his confidence. He would slump at the plate, and he would take those slumps into the field. I said before the season started, it was all about Beatty's confidence. He had to have a strong start because he's 24 years old. He's not really a kid anymore. I know he's pretty much a baby by Major League standards, but he had to establish himself this year because the Mets have a lot of position player prospects coming up. Beatty wasn't going to get a very long leash, certainly not past this year. So... The fact that the Mets were really criticized for not really pursuing a veteran upgrade, I didn't have a problem with that. There were even some people who wanted Beatty and Mark Vientos to platoon. I was not really a fan of that uh, because to me, Vientos is a one-trick pony. He hits the ball hard, but he doesn't do anything else. He doesn't run well. He doesn't hit for average. He strikes out a third of the time, and his defense is terrible. To me, at best, he is going to be a right-handed DH but he's not a player you're going to put in the lineup every day. He's certainly not going to play in the field on a regular basis. But then, when we had the very, very unfortunate incident where Ronnie Mauricio tore the ACL in his right knee playing winter ball, the job was essentially Brett Beatty's. Well, he hasn't given it up so far. And I know it's only 12 games. It's not enough to say I told you so. It's not soon enough to say, yes, this is our third baseman of the future. But he may have been the best position player in the first two weeks for the Mets. So let's look at a few quick numbers. 45 at-bats. Through his first 45 at-bats, his uh, slash line is 311, 354, and 378. A home run, six RBIs. And there's two big flaws that he had in this game last year that's gone very well this year. One criticism was his struggle against left-handed pitching. Well, this year he is 4 for 12 against lefties with a home run, and his defense got a lot of criticism last year too. He has yet to make an error in 31 opportunities, and he has had some highlight plays. I mean, that catch on Thursday against the Braves, that line-out catch where he sort of did that little squat, you know, that little squat afterwards, and basically, you know, showed it to his team. I mean, you're, you're seeing a little bit of swagger. Uh, from Brett Beatty. He seems like a different player, a much more confident player, somebody who feels like he belongs in the major leagues, and that was the biggest issue last year. And I want to give credit to that to not only Brett Beatty, but also Francisco Lindor. Lindor's off to a terrible start, I know that, but Lindor before the season invited Beatty and Vientos to his home to work on their defense. Lindor has really stepped up as a leader, especially in the clubhouse, which he did not do early on. I think Lindor is now comfortable in New York, and I think him working with Beatty, that's definitely playing uh, a big role. Because Beatty looked at Lindor, who he no doubt respects, and said, wow, this guy believes in me, or he wouldn't be taking the time to work with me. And to me, it's the exact same thing. And now I think that, in turn, is boosting Beatty's confidence. So... We, so a little bit of confidence, a little bit of success, a little bit of maturity. That's what we're seeing, and it's helping Beatty. But can it be trusted going forward? I think it can. And I'm going back to what Eric Chavez, the Mets hitting coach, said in a recent interview. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this quote. 
Chavez said, we can break things down physically all we want, but there is a mental component, a mental confidence. I've said for the last couple of years that when Beatty starts believing he can play third base at this level, and when he can hit at this level is when it will happen, when it will break through. Continuing the quote, we could coach our asses off all we want, but that is something that it needs to come from the inner emotional part of it and the psychological part. Regardless of how good any coach is, the player has to believe it, and it's what we're seeing. And we're seeing that as Brady Bake breaks out in 2024. Now, we don't know what's going to happen over the next five and a half months. Maybe Beatty will prove himself to be a very streaky player with good tools, kind of like a Michael Conforto. Maybe that's what he is, but I don't see any reason with as well-rounded a player as he can be and as toolsy a player as he is, why he can't become the Mets' third baseman for the uh, for the future. So I'm excited about Beatty. I'm really glad for his start. What are your thoughts? Put them right down there in the comments. Do you believe in Brett Beatty going forward? Thanks, everybody, for watching this video, and I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.